Well, hello, thank you so much for watching. My name is Fena. I'm a full-time photographer here in the Netherlands, Netherlands, specialized in newborn and baby photography. And uh, today I'm gonna share something with you about shutter speed. Within the world of photography, there are three main factors which influence what your photo is gonna look like. It's your shutter speed, your aperture, and your ISO. So this video will be about your shutter speed and I will post separate videos explaining ISO and aperture because uh, I want to help you try and take beautiful photos uh, of the people around you, the landscapes, the animals, just whatever. Shutter speed is all about freezing an action or blurring a motion. So it determines how much movement enters into your photo. So shutter speed is pretty much the amount of time that your shutter is open. So the faster your shutter speed, the faster it opens and closes. The slower your shutter speed, the longer it stays open uh, and the more movement and light enters into your photo. So the shutter is kind of like a curtain that's in front of your, the center of your camera and it opens and closes when you press your shutter, when you take a photo, when you shoot a picture. When it opens, uh, it exposes the sensor to the light. The light also has to enter through the aperture of your lens, but we'll discuss that in another video. So the shutter speed is kind of like your exposure time. But when you clap really fast, in between those claps, there's not a lot happening. When you clap really slow, and you do the little dance in between, and you clap again, something happened in between those two claps. Movement happened. Um, so that's kind of like with your shutter. I mean, it's kind of like a strange way to explain it, but when it opens and closes really fast, not a lot of movement enters into your photo, so you have a frozen image. Um, sometimes when people do bird photography and they want to have a picture sharp of the bird with the wings just standing still, they have to use a really fast shutter speed because the wings just uh, move really fast. I photograph children, so my shutter speed has to be pretty fast because the kids move around, they don't sit still and I want to have a sharp, sharp photo. Sometimes you want to have a slower shutter speed, for example, when you take a photo of cars uh, or trains or motorbikes just moving and you want to have this movement into your photos. Sometimes you see these photos that people take uh, during the night, like standing on a bridge or whatever, and you see the lights of the cars just like forming these beautiful lines. That's because just the shutter was open for a longer period of time, so they didn't just freeze the car in that one split second. They opened it a little bit longer so the light could travel uh, and create these beautiful lines. People might also use a uh, longer shutter speed when taking photos of waterfalls, because then you see the water really like flowing in the photo. So I went to a water park a while back and I took some photos with different shutter speeds because uh, the water came from a fountain was just falling down. So I took some photos to show you how you can freeze the water or how you can make the water move in the photo. You can see what different shutter speeds do to the movement in your photo. Uh, sometimes they want to use a longer shutter speed to get more light in the photo. So for example, when they put the camera on a tripod so it's standing super still, they don't necessarily want to have the movement, but the longer the shutter is open, the more light enters into your photo. So for example, when they want to take photos of the stars, um, they might use a longer shutter speed to get more light in the photo, but they have it on a tripod, so it's standing still, so it's not really getting a lot of movement because the stars are standing pretty still. So um, one other example, when you, for example, want to have a longer shutter speed is when you're photographing lightning because it's kind of cool when you see these lightnings on your photo. So shutter speed is usually measured in a fraction of a second. So when you see your shutter speed, you might see one slash 250. So it's 250th part of a second. So that's really fast. Um, when you see on your camera, your shutter speed in your display, it doesn't really show the one slash because they want to have a lot of numbers in a very small display so they, they might just show the 250 but it's still the same okay so i just moved to another part of my studio because i feel here that the light is a little bit better so the bigger the denominator the faster the speed the longest shutter speed kind of depends on your camera i think on most cameras it's about 30 seconds um 
the fastest shutter speed also depending on your camera can be 1 slash 4000 so it's 1 4000th part of a second that's really fast it also means you don't really get a lot of light in your photo so the faster the shutter speed the less light enters into your photo the less movement enters into your photo so some lenses have vibration reduction which is really cool because when you shoot a photo out of your hand i mean you have a heartbeat you breathe so you get movement in your lens i don't have super steady hands i'm not a surgeon um, I can keep my camera pretty still when I take a photo, but there will always be some movement. So some lenses, they compensate this with some vibration reduction. Uh, some lenses don't. Uh, usually they're a little bit more expensive when you want to have vibration reduction, but it's nice. When you want to control your shutter speed, you have to put your camera either in the manual mode, where you can control all three factors, your shutter speed, your ISO, and your aperture. You can also put your camera in the shutter priority mode where you control your shutter speed and then your camera automatically adjusts the aperture. Okay, so here I got my little camera, the Nikon D600. Her brother, the D610, is still in my camera bag. Uh, I have the 2470 lens. I have my battery grip right here. When I change my shutter speed, it's in the manual mode right now. When I change my shutter speed, I do it by moving this thingy but on cameras it might be different um, and I can see it in my display right uh, there so it's ooh, I'm gonna drop this camera right there so it's 200 160 250 when I take photos in the studio I usually put my shutter speed at 1 200 because uh, I use flash so I want to be sensitive to that so that the flash has time to enter the frame and I don't get this black bar in my photo I usually don't go lower than 1 200 because I want to have sharp photos and I move around the kids move around um, yeah they say kind of like they used to say when you have a 50 millimeter lens your, sh your shutter speed shouldn't be lower than 1 slash 50 when you just shoot out of your hand, so when you don't use a tripod. Uh, nowadays, because there are so many pixels in your camera, you do see a little bit more movement. I would say double it up. So when you have a 50 millimeter lens, use at least a shutter speed of um, 100. So when you use a 200 millimeter lens, uh, you can put your shutter speed at 1 200. Or if you want to be safe and you have enough light entering into your photo, put it at 1 400. So I would usually say double it up. So here I have a 24 70 millimeter lens. So when I zoom in to 70 millimeter, my shutter speed when shooting out of my hand should be at least 1 slash 140. And when you have a, a lens with a larger focal length or you zoom in with your zoom lens, uh, you notice the camera shake more. So I'm going to wrap up this video soon. Uh, but just remember, the faster your shutter speed, the less movement enters into your photo, the less light enters into your photo. You can compensate the loss of light by cranking up your ISO, so put your ISO higher, or by, or by shooting with a bigger aperture, so a lower F number. But yeah, you can always adjust the light in your photo by playing either with your shutter speed, your ISO, or your aperture. Those, two th those three things influence the amount of light coming into your photo. Light is really important in photography, um, but the shutter speed also influences the amount of movement coming into your photo. Yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to my channel when you, when you want to see the video about the ISO and the aperture as well. I also post week vlogs where I show you parts of my setups in the studio, my camera settings, props that I use, uh, I show behind the scenes um, videos. Now I'm gonna set up the studio because I have two sessions in the studio today. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave a comment. Have a nice day, bye bye.